All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech in our lab. Today we're taking a look at the UEFI BIOS on the ASUS P8Z77-V. Of course, we're on the easy mode, which is your default mode when you first enter into the BIOS here on the, on this motherboard. It's going to give you all your basic information. It's got a nice clean layout, very easy on the eyes. You know, there's nothing garish or anything like that. Unlike, uh, let's say, the one that's on the ROG boards, that, that bright red can be a little bit rough on the eyes, but you know, it's still got a nice clean feeling to it. So most of the stuff here is going to be very click friendly. You're just going to click. You can see as you hover over each one uh, what effect it's going to have on the system here, at least as far as your sh basic system uh, performance options. Here, of course, if you do your power saving, you're going to see which way it leans on their uh, triangle here. You can change your boot priority simply by dragging things around. Of course, you have a shortcut menu. Hit your F3 shortcut. It's going to take you directly into these. Uh, we do wish we would see that search function like we saw on Intel's BIOS. That was just a really nice feature. And of course you have your boot menu which you can hit here. Um, you can go directly to advanced mode by hitting F7 or you can uh, click this which will take you into advanced mode as well. Advanced mode is going to be much more like the BIOS you're familiar with but it's just going to be more graphical here. Uh, you can do things with a mouse input uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll look at the AI tweaker. Now this still has the overclock that we have on our board and we ran for testing. So you can see we have our different settings, um, key input going to be very quick. There's not the, any kind of the lag or delay like we see with some of the other boards. And one thing we do want to point out here real quick on these boards, we've seen it on the M Pro and now we're seeing it on the Dash V as well, is this ASUS multi-core enhancement. This right here, it's a great function, but if you're going to overclock, make sure you turn this off or if you're going to use an XMP profile in your memory, make sure you go ahead and turn it off. That way you're going to get the best ability. We've seen where leaving this enabled is just going to hurt your overclock. Right, so as you move down, you can see you have your other options, your PLL over voltage, you can set your memory, your IGP uh, max frequency, you know, your EPU power saving mode, of course, since we're overclocked, that's going to be disabled. You have your OC tuner, DRAM timing control. It's going to be this, you know, pretty much very simple. We've left most of this to auto. The reason we left this to auto is we wanted to see what effect uh, overclocking this would have and how it would affect our memory timings as well as basic memory performance. See how the motherboard is going to identify this and adjust the RAM accordingly to maintain stability. CPU power management it's going to be very simple stuff you know your power limits, your long duration maintain, primary plane, current limit all of those are going to be right here. Uh, speed step, turbo mode whether that's enabled or disabled we always do our overclocks with turbo mode enabled and of course under here you have the Digi Plus power controls these are going to be your nice tweaks to your power system that are going to allow you to get that little bit extra out of what you would normally get from the power system when you're overclocking your CPU. So you can see here we have a couple of tweaks. The CPU current uh, capability is at 140%. That's going to give us the ability to push a little bit more current through the CPU just to make sure we do get that stability at the higher uh, clock speeds. As you know, Ivy Bridge is going to run hotter. It's going to require a little bit more uh, voltage to get those higher clocks just because of that reduced process and some of the power overhead that you're going to get as well as current leakage at that 22 nanometer process. Of course you can see here, this one right here, um, this was not the default voltage that we used. We were trying to push a little bit higher, sort of get up to uh, 5 gigahertz. We were able to get 4.9 into the operating system and run a couple of our tests, but we were not able to get any higher than that and we couldn't run all of our tests. So for our overclock, our basic 24-7 uh, overclock, we actually had this at 1.38. So, and that gave us stability throughout the entire thing. Of course, we have our IGP offset voltage that was set automatically. We left that the same um, as when we ran the auto tune that you saw that you'll see a little bit later as we talk about overclocking tools. DRAM voltage is 1.65. That's to get us to the 1600 megahertz, and we left everything else pretty much at auto except for the PLL voltage. So then, of course, you have the rest of uh, your options here, your B-clock recovery, your CPU spread spectrum. Uh, those are all just your basic features. When we move into advanced, you can see you have, uh, you know, your different options here, and it's also going to tell you, you know, a lot more about your processor. The adaptive thermal monitor, it's, you know, pretty standard things, hyper-threading, active processor cores, if you're going to have one, two, three, or all, it's going to, you know, allow you to set that here. And then most of these are pretty much just your basic functions. You can also get to the CPU power management. Same thing we saw in AI Tweaker. It's just another shortcut to get into there. So then we'll move, well actually we'll go back here. Head back. 
You have your PCH configuration, your high precision timer, rapid start connect uh, technology, uh, which we left disabled, smart connect, which is uh, the ability to download drivers directly from Intel when they're needed, SATA configuration, you know, we've shown you this before on, uh, on the M Pro, it's very similar. Of course your system agent, graphics configuration, you can see what we've got here, uh, multi-monitor, that's for the MVP function. The North Bridge, whether it's going to run, we know what mode is it going to run? Is it going to run in Generation 3, Generation 2, or Generation 1? You can set that. We left it at Auto um, just to see how the board would perform there. USB, you know, onboard devices, we can uh, enable, disable these here, which is, uh, you know, nice options, especially if you're going to tinker around with it and try and get more performance out of it. Your advanced power management, and of course your network stack. All right, let's move on over to monitoring. Here you're going to see what you get, you know, with your actual monitoring when you're running, and of course you have your QFAN controls. We had those disabled um, because we're running a closed loop water cooler on here. As you can see, when you set it up here, you can set up different fan profiles, silent, turbo, of course manual, which is going to give you the greatest functionality, you know, flexibility with it. You can set up your ranges, all that. We're going to go ahead and kick that back over to disabled. And then you have your different chassis fans, all of those you can set them up. Anti-surge support, which is great if you have any kind of power spikes or unclean power. It's just going to help keep, uh, you know, maintain the life of the board. So then we'll look over here at boot. Of course, your boot options, there's nothing really, uh, you know, special about this. Of course, you can change between easy mode and advanced mode if you want to pop up in this mode instead of that easy mode. Then, of course, you have your different uh, boot options here. And the final screen is going to be your uh, tools. You have your Easy Flash 2, which means you can flash from a um, you know, USB stick. But you can also have uh, your OC profiles, which we don't have any installed here, but you can set them up here. And, of course, you have your SPD information, which is going to tell us exactly what is going on with the memory that we have installed. Now, important to remember, when you notice over here you have your JDEX spec. That is going to be the default for this memory. When I plug it in, if I don't do anything else, that's what it's going to come up as. 1333 at 1.5 volts. This is important because all of these new Z77 boards actually support DDR3-1600. However, there's no JDEX spec DDR3-1600 memory out right now. That's going to be coming later. A bunch of manufacturers are lining up to get that out. So what you'll see is when you drop these in, the JDEX spec here will show 1600 megahertz, and that's what it'll operate at. Of course, you have your different XMP profiles. These are all programmed into a device called the Serial Presence Device. That's what SPD stands for. When the memory is plugged in there, it identifies itself to the board, and that's what it's going to start up as. All right, so we'll head back. Another thing we want to talk about here is you do have the option to print screen in ASUS's BIOSes. They've done this for a while. It's a nice feature. You just hit F12. As long as you have a properly formatted USB stick in there, it needs to be FAT32. So you can go ahead and drop that in there, hit the F12 key, it's going to save that as a bitmap file so you can go ahead and look at the BIOS in, uh, you know, on a screenshot or you can send it to somebody else or just to maintain a record of what you've got and the, and the settings you have. Now coming in the future, ASUS is going to have different uh, online capability to submit an overclock or submit a BIOS so somebody could actually download that BIOS file and lo load it into their board and they'd be able to use your overclock settings on their hardware to see if they can maybe get the same things. And that's going to be nice for those advanced uh, settings and advanced tweaks such as memory timings, all of that, as well as the power controls. So we'll see that hopefully coming out here pretty soon. Uh, it's primarily going to be for the Republic of Gamers boards, but our understanding is that it, you know, as with everything ASUS does, is they will start off at the enthusiast uh, space and then it will trickle down to the rest of their boards. So we will see this eventually for this line of board, uh, sort of their channel boards. All right, that covers everything that we wanted to talk about in the UEFI BIOS. Again, it's one of the smoother ones out there. Um, there are a couple things we want to see. We'd love to see a search function so we can look for something directly by its name. But other than that, it is probably the best UEFI implementation that we've seen on these uh, on the Z77 boards and actually since it, uh, the UEFI standard has come out. All right, well, as always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.